Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching City Cycle Hum, and in this video, I've got a guitar to unbox, which should be painfully obvious, considering I've got a guitar-sized box right here, and as you can tell by the print on the box, it is a D'Angelico. They asked me if I wanted to check out one of their new Excel semi-hollow guitars, and I had a look at the line, and I was like, oh hey, you've got a mini version! It's a mini DC XL, a miniature double-cut XL. I've long been pretty compelled by the concept of small-bodied, semi-hollow electric guitars like the Epiphone, like Wildcat and Alley Cat, and the newer Harmony um, Comets. I thought those were pretty cool, but I haven't had the opportunity to, oh, <laughs> to actually have one in my possession. This got a little bit roughed up in shipping, so hopefully everything is okay in there. If not, I guess I'll be writing an email instead of publishing a video. <laughs> but yeah, I've always been very interested in the concept of a smaller bodied semi-hollow electric guitar. Semi-hollows are fun, but I, I tend to prefer the smaller feel of a solid body. And now the big reveal. Feels like a fairly decent gig bag style case here, which is nice. I've never had a bag that can fit my regular size semi-hollow. So a lot of times they don't make it out of the house for gigging because I don't have a way to transport them. I could fix that by just getting a gig bag or a case that would make sense for a semi-hollow. I just haven't gotten around to it. It's nice that this came with its own case though, so I don't have to worry about that. Here we go. It came in black and like a dark walnut and this blue, and I decided to go for the blue. Oh, it's the single cut. It's not the double cut at all. I'm fine with that. I think that's classy looking. The background blue is so bright that it makes this almost look gray on screen. <laughs> What do we have here? I really like their more simple headstock design that they came up with here. If you've seen D'Angelico headstocks before, they have this wild kind of like, like beetle, the insect sort of mandible thing going on on their classic headstock. This is a more subdued pulled back design that I think is probably more marketable to more people. It's not quite as unique and quirky as that classic jazz headstock. What do you guys think? Do you prefer this headstock or the classic D'Angelico headstock? We've got two humbuckers here. I'm assuming a volume and a tone. Why would they do anything different? Nickel hardware and nickel covers on the pickups. That looks very classy. This is meant to be a more stripped down line of guitars from D'Angelico. Not as many bells and whistles as their regular production lines, but it still has like beautiful five ply binding all over the place. <laughs> oh, I really like these little sideways squares. Some people might call those diamonds. You could call them a diamond, but depending on your perspective, if it's tilted, then that's a square. Now it's a diamond. Now it's a square. Even nickel. Grover split top tuners here. Split top tuners on a three by three. I don't think I own any three by three headstocks that have split top tuners. You know I'm a big fan of split top tuners. It's honestly my preference. The frets look beautiful. Mirror shine on them. Very well dressed on the edges. Yeah, that's... That's a fantastic looking fret. I'll test it up and down the neck to make sure there's no buzz or anything like that. Look very modern, medium jumbo sort of thing. I don't know all the specs on neck radius or anything like that. I'll flash up some specs on the screen. Give some work to editing Ryan. He's so lazy editing Ryan. I sit down here and look into a camera, do all this talking, and he just sits up in the office and edits. Gotta make that guy busy. Oh, he's gonna hate me for saying that. <laughs> I'm assuming this is a bone nut. It has that texture. All right. 
I think it's time to plug it in and see what it sounds like, right guys? Like always, I'll be running into the two Princeton's rig. <laughs> Let it go for a little while longer this time. Yeah, you earned it. Was that enough? I think that was enough. You guys earned a little extra two Princeton's today. I could tell you were ready for it. You needed it in your life, right? So anyways, let's get into it. Let's start on the bridge pickup here. Wipe away any little bits of cardboard lint that I've picked up in unboxing. <laughs> Sustaining that cord nice and long. out. I'm not someone who chases sustain. Maybe it's because I was playing my Jag Sting last night. <laughs> and that thing is, you know, surf guitars typically are not sustain machines. So now I'm noticing a contrast. Wow, yeah. That sounds great. The last semi hollow I filmed was uh, that Ert ES335 style thing, and it really leaned hard into this dark, jazzy, warm sort of sound. And this has given me a nice bit of clarity in comparison to that. <laughs> okay, so far, I mean, the playability in the neck feels great. It's really well dialed in. I haven't checked the intonation yet, but the action is exactly where I would set it. I've got no notes here on the action setup of this guitar. Of course, that's all personal preference. Let's try the middle position now. Nice jangly acoustic middle position there. Try the next some more. Getting a little bit of buzz. Might need to raise the action just a smidge to get over that or just live with it because it feels really nice. I'm probably going to listen to it in post and realize that I'm only hearing the buzz from my hand. I'm not hearing it from the amps or something like that. Thank you. 
I'm just noodling. I'm always noodling though, right? When do I ever actually play something? <laughs> I play little snippets of things that I know, and I play a lot of noodles just to fill dead air, right guys? That's what I do. Because I'm having fun. That's how I have fun playing guitar. I like to have emphasis on playing when I play guitar. I want to play around. When I'm, you know, playing with other musicians and I play songs. When I'm playing by myself, I noodle. I work on little bits here and there. And then when I'm really like dedicated to learning something, I sit and I play the whole song. But when I'm just playing, I just want to play. How do you guys feel about that? When you sit and play at home, do you play entire songs or do you like noodle and work out little bits and things like that? <laughs> Try with a little bit of reverb here from the Source Audio True Spring. I say a little bit of reverb and then I throw a full blown, like, trippy spring surfy reverb at it. Back to the bridge. bit of a wiggle stick but it does have a stop tail piece so I could put one of those less trims on here that would be fun right a little wiggle stick there or a vibramate and put a big speed and then I recovered. It's always just the next note over, right? rings out. I like that. It's doing the resonant thing too, where I can feel it in my rib cage against my diaphragm, vibrating all the air in my lungs. It's not like the most resonant guitar ever, but I'm definitely noticing it. Feel it in my leg as well. Speaking of my leg, it looks like it's pretty much almost exact same color as my slightly faded Levi's here. That's what this is. This is a denim colored guitar. <laughs> if you're into Canadian tuxedos, this might be the finish for you. If you're wearing jean pants and a jean shirt 
in a jean jacket and a jean hat. Might as well complete the ensemble with this guitar. Get all matchy-matchy, full Canadian tuxedo. I like the knobs that D'Angelico uses. I complained one time with one of the guitars because they were push pulls and it was a little bit hard to grab them, but these aren't push pulls. They have these really cool, like, ebony wood knobs. I don't know if they're actually ebony, but they're like that dark ebony color. Pretty glossy and slick fretboard finish here, too. Not doing like that coated, like Rickenbacker sort of thing, but it's definitely like polished to a high shine on this rosewood or ebony or whatever this wood happens to be on the fretboard. It's really comfortable. I'm really liking the body size too. I'm glad I went with the mini. It feels a lot easier to jump into this guitar from all my regular, you know, small bodied, solid body guitars around here. Sometimes I struggle with bigger guitars, with semi hollows because of the size difference and I'm not used to how it's sitting on my body, but this feels very comfortable to me. And it's a great player too. I think I will end up raising the action a little bit on the bass side of the pickups, on the heavier strings, because I am getting a little bit of a sizzle. And it's got room to go higher. It's set up to be really fast right now, so I'll probably do that. But the neck itself, the fretwork, just the comfort of the body. Yeah, I'm having an instant bonding sort of situation here. No dead frets on the D string. None on the E. Pretend that bad note didn't happen. No dead frets there. Yeah, it's it's really well put together. Let's get into some dirty sounds now. Start off with the Warm Audio Warm Drive, which is a Zen Drive style pedal. to be a rock and roll machine. And the net. 
tuning check there, but considering I've been playing this guitar for uh, probably like half an hour now, and I only tuned it once out of the box, I think it's doing pretty dang great in the tuning stability department. The tuners themselves, they are a vintage split top style tuner. They feel like that. They're not a modern, luxurious, like mechanically perfectly gliding smooth tuner experience. If you like that sort of experience, then get yourself a set of modern locking tuners or something like that. But I like the feel of these. I like the vintage feel. They feel stable to me. They feel nice and smooth. They feel firm, but they're not that modern, like kind of high gloss sort of feel when you, when you turn them and tune them and whatnot. But they seem to be holding tune great. What do you guys think about that? Are you bummed about the vintage style tuners? Or do you like that sort of thing the way that I do? It sounds great. With overdrive and distortion, let's try it with some fuzz. That's gonna show you a lot about you know what this guitar sounds like, just creaming it with a bunch of crazy fuzz from the JHS Supreme down here.
having a good time. I'm always a little bit nervous when I unbox a guitar because I don't know if I'm about to have a good time or if I'm just going to be like, oh yeah, here it is. Here's a guitar. I'm having a good time. I'm excited to use this live. I, this is definitely going to be a churchable guitar for me. I'm going to gig with this. I'm going to play at church with it. I'm going to stack it through drives and reverbs and delays and modulations and stuff and have a great time. I'm going to try to, you know, like get feedback out of it and stuff like that. Should I try to find a wiggle stick for it? I don't know. Mmm. Great. Another guitar that I like. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should have gone with one of the other finishes. I thought that this would look the best on set because it's lighter and the other ones are darker. And I tend to prefer lighter colored guitars. Kind of feel like it needs a pick guard. Should I track down an aftermarket D'Angelico pick guard? They do such cool looking pick guards with all the art deco details and whatnot. I wonder if it'll fit if I get an aftermarket one or one that someone's selling on eBay or something like that. Because I kind of think this would look cool with one. Break up the blue a little bit. But yeah, what do you guys think? What do you think of this guitar? What do you think about the details? What do you think about the price and things like that? I'll have a link down below if you want to check all that out. I try not to mention price too much in videos because in the times we live in and the times we're going to live in, prices change all the time. And I don't like to have them hard baked into videos unless it's like a huge feature of whatever I'm showing off. I don't like to be like, well, this is this much. Like I did that with all the affordable stuff and I get comments every day. Like, oh, well, it's this much now. I wish I hadn't said anything. But in that case, it's all, you know, like the point of the videos is the price. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude and nasty comment. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked. Huge thanks to D'Angelico for sending me out yet another guitar. They keep taking chances on me. I'm not a jazzy guy. D'Angelico is a jazzy company, but with this one, I see that they're trying to lean into more of a rock and roll sort of direction, and it works. I can absolutely recommend this as a rock and roll stick for doing your rock and roll bar chords and power chords and your deedly deedlies and stuff like that. It's a fun guitar. What do you guys think about the headstock? I think D'Angelico is going in a direction that I think is gonna open them up to a wider customer base with this headstock. I think the kind of wild traditional, it is a traditional headstock, but that wild headstock that D'Angelico uses has kept some people away where this is a lot more approachable for a wider audience. What do you guys think about that? So anyways, everything I already said and stay grounded. Bye everybody.